This is Mrs. Robertson, and today we're going to go over the answers to our quarter three topics review. <clears throat> In this packet, we're going to go over the inequality, rules, and interpreting graphing, interior angles of quadrilaterals and triangles, area of triangles, parallelograms, trapezoids, and composite shapes, and the surface area of rectangular prisms, and it's along with volume of rectangular prisms. All right, yesterday we started going over the answers to this worksheet, and here are the answers that you should have. So go through at this time, kids, and make sure you have these answers. You can pause the video at any time if you need more time to check your answers. So, number one, 137 degrees. Number two, 105. Remember, with quadrilaterals, you add them together and subtract from 360. Number three is 65. Number four is 58 degrees. Any questions on those? Did everyone get the same answers as what I have? Yeah. All right, number five, 45 degrees, 110 degrees for six. Number seven, 132 degrees. Number eight, 74 degrees. And number nine is 49 degrees. Kids, I will be collecting this packet, and you will be getting points for each problem on the packet. So make sure you do your work. I'm giving you the answers. It should be an easy grade for you. Can't just have the answers down, though. You have to show the work. All right, for this page. Now let's go to the next page. The next page of the packet, we did um, 1 and 2 yesterday. We break it into two pieces. We have the triangle plus the rectangle. And your final answer is 52 and 25 hundredths feet squared. Here we have two rectangles. Um, we added it together and we have 30 and 56 hundredths yards squared. In this problem here, in number three, we have a rectangle plus a triangle. You do have to have your formulas memorized before the test um, next week. They will not always give you the formulas. But you know the area of a rectangle equals length times width. The area of a triangle equals uh, base times height divided by 2. So our length times width is 5 times 6, not the 14. The 14 goes the whole length. 5 times 6 equals 30. Now we find the area of the triangle. Base times the height. So we have 8 times 5. And since it's a triangle, don't forget to divide by 2. 8 times 5 is 40. Divided by 2 is 20. Now what do I do with those two answers? I add them because we put them together. The answer, 50 centimeters squared. Any questions? All right. Now, for the next problem, you can cut it up into two shapes. I am going to cut it here. So I have this rectangle. And I have this rectangle. So I'm going to add two rectangles. Okay? So this is the one rectangle and here is the other. That's going to be 5 times 3 which equals 15. This one is 2 times 6 and that equals 12. What do I do to these numbers? Add them together. Devin, what do I get when I add these two numbers together? Uh, right, 27 centimeters squared. Any questions? Okay, in the next one, this one was optional. Um, I'm going to cut it right here. And then I have a trapezoid and a rectangle. Okay, so this is a trapezoid. Okay, and the base is 13. That's B1. I'm going to call it B1. 
B2 is 7. And the height, if from here to here is 8, from here to here is 16, the height is 8. The distance, and the height is the distance between the parallel sides. The formula for the area of a trapezoid equals um, the height times B1 plus B2 divided by 2. Now, kids, some of you noticed that that was a trapezoid. We could have used the trapezoid formula, but we were doing composite shapes, and I just put a rectangle and a triangle together for that. All right, so back to this problem. Um, and, and then we also have, besides the trapezoid, we have the rectangle. So the area of the rectangle equals base times height. So that's going to be 8 times 7, which is 56. This one is going to be 8 times 7 plus 13 divided by 2. 7 plus 13 is 20. 8 times 20 is 160 divided by 4 is 40. Now what do I do to these two answers here, kids? Add them together. Did you get 96 for your answer number 5? That is 96. So when you add them together, it equals 96 centimeters squared. Any questions? We did this problem yesterday, and we found the area of the big triangle, base times height, divided by 2. 8 times 10 divided by 2 is 40. And then they cut out this rectangle. So we found the area of the rectangle. 2 times 4 is 8. And since it was a cutout, you subtract and end up with 32 meters squared. Any questions on this page? All right. Then let's go to the next page. Um, yesterday we went through these and we said 6, if we were comparing 6 to x or something, um, at least. 6 is at least x. That means it's greater than or equal to. Could it be x? Yes. So you put that there. So it's greater than. At least looks like that. At most. Could it be that value? Yes. But can it be bigger? No. That's the biggest it could be. So it will look like this. Less than. 6 is less than x. The less than always, it looks like this. And the point is with the little number. No more than. Could it be that value? Yes. Can it be bigger than that? No. No more means the word less. So it's going to go this way. No more is less, but it also includes the number we're talking about. Under, greater than or equal to, when you see the word greater than, you write this symbol, more than, this symbol. Okay, here we have this, no less. No less means more, more than, but it can also be equal to. No less than means it could be equal to or larger. Exceeds means it's this symbol, like the greater than. Less than or equal to looks like this. Any questions? Now, you had to do these problems for homework. You must be 18 years old to vote. I'm going to use the variable x and 18. Can you be 18 to vote? So it gets this. Do you have to be older or younger? Older, so X gets the big end, 18 gets the little point. Children under 5 will be admitted free. Okay, we have X will represent children um, and 5. Okay, can you be 5 and be admitted? No, only under, so it's going to look like this. X has to be less than 5. John lifts at most 75 pounds. 
Can he lift 75 pounds, guys? Yes. Can he lift more than that? No. So it's 75 or smaller, right? Yes. These are not hard, but you got to practice seeing them so you know what to write down. Your suitcase must be no more. Oh, it's one of those no more than 50 pounds. And this says 50. Okay, can it be 50 pounds? Yes. Can it be more than 50 or less than 50? Yeah, no more it means less. What? Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. The next one. You must be at least 42 inches tall to ride the roller coaster. Okay, can you be 42 inches? Yeah, so if you're standing in line, if you're 42 inches, you can ride it. Or if you are what? Bigger, 42 inches or larger, taller. I know I was at Disney World this past summer with my granddaughter, who's five. And, um, oh, she wanted to ride some of those rides so bad. And we put, you know, you get those shoes that have a thicker sole to help boost her height in a little bit. So she, and then we, we researched to make sure she wouldn't be disappointed. And we didn't want to stand in a line that she couldn't ride in. So, but I know the feeling. And then when you finally reach the height, you just, it's like such a good feeling. It's like, yes, I'm finally tall enough to ride that ride. But little Lolo, who's three, she couldn't ride it. So we tried to keep Lolo away from the rides that she couldn't ride. Well, but at Disney World, most of the rides in, in uh, the Magic Kingdom you can ride. Okay, three, t ooh, three times a number, that's three X, is at most 15. Can it be a 15? That's the biggest it can be. So it can be 15 or smaller. The sum of a number in 6. N plus 6 is at least 21. Can it be 21? That's at least. Does that mean that's the smallest it can be? At least. So it can be bigger than that. So N plus 16 can be 21 or bigger. At least means that's the smallest it can be is 21. Always ask yourself these questions, kids. A number divided by 2. N, I like writing it like that. N divided by 2 is no more than 16. Oh, here we have no more than. No more than means it's going to be less than. Can it be 16? It can be 16 or smaller. It can't be more than 16, but it can be 16 or smaller. The difference of a number in 7, that means you're subtracting, is less than 10. That's a friendly one. And then we have twice a number exceeds 30. How do you write twice a number? 2n. Exceeds means what? Look at the words up above. Greater than 30. Once again, if you didn't get all of this written down, I will post the video later. You can go back and listen to me talk about these things to reinforce this. You know, maybe you can just listen to this like, um, like a blog at night before you go to bed. Listen to Mrs. Roberts. You don't have to watch it. Just listen to my voice before you go to bed. Put your earphones in. I will put you to sleep. All right, probably would. Okay, now on this page, um, what we have here, write an equation to represent. We did these earlier, didn't we? Um, here we said the input is x. It's a little hard to see. Output is y. And we said it was 3 times x equals y. Could someone give me another way to write this? What's another way I could write that instead of 3x equals y? Oh, and I could have said um, y, well, equals x times three. y equals x times 3 or y equals 3x. Both of those would be considered correct. Did you have that written down? Yes. Good. You should have had that written down because we went over these. Um, here, the input is x the output is y, and we had a couple choices on that. 
what was one of the answers that we had for this uh, for this problem? Foster. What's an answer for number two? We had two different things we could use for this one. It should be written on your paper. Aiden, help us out. X plus zero equals Y. Zero plus zero is zero. One plus zero is one. What was another one of our equations we came up with? Yes. Y equals X plus zero. Can you give us another one, Michaelin? Were you going to have that same one, or did you have another one? Okay. There's another one. Yeah. Yep. Y or yeah, y equals x because they're the same. Or y equals one times x. Those are all different things we could have had. You could have said x equals y. That was just sort of a, a strange. I don't think there'll be one that like that easy on the test. Now we're going to write an inequality for each one of these sentences here. More than 40,000 fans attended the opening football game. Okay, X is more than 40,000. It's, it's not equal to, it's more than. Did everyone have that one? Hmm? You could write it this way. You could say 40,000 is less than X. Both of those would be right. Okay? But X tells you there are more than 40,000 fans. Her earnings were no more than $86. Was it $86? Yes. Bigger or smaller? No more than means smaller. So X gets the point. So it's X is less than or equal to 86. A savings account balance is now less than. X is less than 550 it's not even equal to 550 dollars it's just less than the number of club members is at least 25 all right is it 25 yes at least 25 now does that mean it's bigger than 25 or smaller at least means it is that's the smallest it, X can be, so it's bigger. X is at least 25, so that means it's 25 or larger. Are you writing these down? Yes. I don't have a paper. It's all out of my uh, binder. So, I'm going to watch the video. Now, the spring calf class at the cattle show is for calves that weigh 825 pounds or less. Okay, can the calf weigh 825 pounds? Yeah. Yes. Can it weigh more? No. no. It's the calves. They're the little ones. So once you get above 825 pounds, you can't be in that class anymore. The spring calf class. Then you would be in the, not the calf, you would be in the heifer class. All right. My grandfather uh, ran a dairy farm, so I do know cows. We had cows growing up. We'd throw... Anyway, I can't tell you stories about growing up on a farm now. We have to keep on going. The minimum deposit, minimum, for a new checking account is $75. Can it be $75? Yes. Now, can it be smaller or greater than $75? The minimum is $75, so you could put in more it's greater okay now kids I think on your test there'll be three problems where you have to do this stuff three problems and then there are two or three problems where you do this I don't want anyone to get these wrong okay open circle that's going to be a closed circle a closed circle okay I put an open circle on the eight my variable has the little point where do the little numbers live? Left. Left. Closed circle on the four. The variable has the little point. Where do the little numbers live? 
close circle on the 11. B has the big N. Where do the big numbers live? To the right. Okay, any questions? You're doing lovely. Okay, um, then we have this page left to do answers with. Here it says write an equation. Oh, I gave you a choice earlier for this. Which one of these would be the correct equation? And we did not choose. Is it going to be T equals 3 times G? T is the total cost. It tells you the total cost T. So T is the total cost. Games is G. And it's $3 per game. It tells you that in this statement there. Is it T equals 3 divided by G? Is it T equals G minus 3? Or T equals 3 plus G? Which one of those is the correct equation? Aiden. That is the correct equation. Now, if you play one game, 1 times 3 is going to cost you $3. How much is it going to cost you if you do two games? Six. Three games. Four games. Any questions on how to complete that? No. All right. An adult polar bear walks at an average rate of five kilometers per hour. That's their fact. A. Write an equation to find K. K is the number of kilometers a polar bear can walk in H hours. Make a table. Okay. So, here we, oh, this is where you graph for number one. This is number one's graph. So, one game we said was three, two games is six, and three games is nine. It's time to go. Have a great weekend, and I will finish recording this later. All right, so here are the answers to the rest of the worksheet. For number one, you should circle T equals three times G. So one game costs three dollars, two games cost six dollars, three games cost nine, and four games cost twelve. In question two, an adult polar bear walks at an average rate of 15 kilometers per hour. Write an equation to find K, the number of kilometers a polar bear can walk in H hours. Well, K equals 5 times H. The polar bear can walk 5 kilometers per hour. So with the table, 0 hours, the polar bear will travel 0 kilometers. 1 hour, 5. 2 hours, 10. And 3 hours, 15. Now you have to graph it. And here you are graphing these um, values, values for this graph or for this table on this graph, one hour, five kilometers, two hours, 10 kilometers, three hours, 15. And on this graph, we have the data from the table here. One game is $3, two games, $6, and three games, $9. Now let's go to the final page. And here are the answers you should have. It says describe the value of each term as a function of its position, then find the value of the tenth term. So after you get the rule, you're going to replace your variable with 10. The rule for this one is n minus 3. So the tenth term is 10 minus 3, which equals 7. The rule is 6 times n. There are a couple ways that you can write this. Six For the tenth term, 6 times 10 is 60. Now, if they said the 11th term, you would take 6 times 11 and get 66, but they wanted to find the 10th term. The rule for this table, n plus 9, so the 10th term, 10 plus 9 is 19. In number 4, the rule is 5 times n, 5 times 10 is 50. Then, for the last four problems, our table is x minus 5 equals 4, x plus 12 equals y, x minus 4 equals y, and 11 times x equals y. And that is it for this worksheet. Have a good day.